the RBA has just put out a warning that all these deferrals mounting up are pointing to a rising risk in defaults. In this video, I'm gonna go over the latest statement by the RBA on the housing market and the huge risks that are mounting up for the Australian housing market. Many property spookers will say, we're all out of the woods, everything's fine now, and everything's gonna boom in 2021, but all the problems that started in March haven't been felt yet, and the real test for the market will be early next year. Okay, let's get into it. The Reserve Bank has highlighted rising levels of financial stress in households and a corresponding risk of borrowers defaulting on home loans could weigh on property prices in its twice annual statement on the financial system. So it's saying there that financial stress is rising and we do see defaults next year and some for sales. It only takes a few for sales in your suburb to affect your property value because when the value goes out there to value your property, he will go off past sales. And if there's been some quick fire sales, they're gonna be at a lower price and will affect your property price. The central bank says the strong capital position of Australian banks have aided borrowers stricken by the pandemic through deferrals. However, as these arrangements come to an end, there is a risk of number of customers in default could spike from current levels. So this is something that's very, very worrying. This is something that I'm watching and I think this is one of the biggest risks to the housing market is all these customers that got put on deferral, if they're gonna be able to repay or not and how the banks are gonna handle it. Are they gonna make them do a for sale or will the banks just let it slide because they don't want their balance sheets to be put at risk? Estimates based on the recent relationship between unemployment and housing loan arrears, while imprecise, suggest the share of borrowers in arrears could reach 2% if unemployment rate reaches 10%. This will double the current rate of the housing arrears, the RBA said. And this is something that I think will be the make or break for the housing market, is how quick can the economy recover and how quick can we get back to full employment? Because at the end of the day, with all these schemes that the government make, if you haven't got a job, you can't qualify for them. But if we do see employment rebound and the economy does open back up again, with low interest rates, easy lending, and all these schemes for first home buyers, we could see property prices rise. The observations are contained in the Financial Stability Review, the Reserve Bank's twice yearly analysis of the financial system and potential risks due to financial stability. Unsurprisingly, the impact of borrowers unable to make payments on their home loans and measures from the banks to carry them through to the other side of the crisis features heavily. So the RBA is watching this closely. They're saying it features heavily. So this, they're definitely right there. This is a huge, huge crisis. And this could be the difference between property prices crashing and property prices still rising is how the banks manage these home loan deferrals. The Reserve Bank notes our banks entered the crisis from a position of strength, enabling them to absorb shocks rather than amplify them as occurred during the GFC. And that's so true. The response to this recession has dwarfed the response in the GFC because every crisis they have to throw more and more money at it. What are they going to do next crisis instead of, you know, the government uh, going into a couple hundred billion deficit, maybe they'll be in trillion dollar deficits. While the share of deferred loans is broadly similar across the state and territories, they are slightly higher in Victoria, reflecting the extended lockdown measures. And that's pretty obvious, of course, it's gonna be higher in Victoria because of the lockdowns. But I have seen articles come out that Victoria is actually uh, the hotspot for home builder. Victoria has the most amount of customers taking up home builder than any other state, which maybe I might think is maybe people building in regional. Um, yeah, it's definitely strange. The Reserve Bank's caution stands in contrast to data which shows a spike in new loans, albeit from a low base. And that's right, of course, there's gonna be a spike after new home loans crash in May, obviously because of the restrictions, people couldn't transact, couldn't buy property, and now they're rebounding. New home loans posted their biggest monthly increase on record in August, as new lending commitments rose across all categories and mortgages to first home buyers overtook those to investors. So for once, first home buyers are overtaking investors and this is not surprising because if I was an investor right now and I was thinking of buying an investment property with these eviction bans on, I wouldn't want to buy an investment property and then all of a sudden get a dud tenant that doesn't pay his rent and there's nothing I can do about it. Not only that, rents are falling. So you may see a property for sale and the real estate agent may say, yeah, mate, we've got a tenant paying 300 bucks a week. But then after that terms up and the tenant realizes, you know, there's other properties in the market, you know, renting for 280, 260, all of a sudden 
what a positively geared property may turn into a negatively geared and you may have not budgeted that and it may put you underwater. Obviously too, with all the first home buy schemes like the 25K home builder in Victoria, you also get 20K for when you're building regional. I think it's the same in Western Australia, around $10,000 for all other metropolitan regions um, across Australia. The 5% first home buy deposit scheme where you don't have to pay LMI, that's another big one. So a lot of first home buyers can get into the market a lot sooner um, and also what well, I think a lot of people aren't talking about, which I think could be happening is if you're a couple and you both took out 20K of your super at each, at the start the banks wouldn't accept that because they'll say you're in hardship. But once it's been in your account for six months, the banks won't look at it. They'll turn a blind eye to it. And I have had this confirmed by some brokers. So all those first home buyers that weren't disciplined enough to save a deposit before, all of a sudden may now have forty to fifty thousand dollars because they haven't been able to spend because of the restrictions and that means and plus with a five percent deposit that means they now have a five percent deposit for properties you know up to eight hundred to nine hundred thousand dollars abs figures released on friday recorded a 12.6 percent jump in new home loans excluding refinancing of existing mortgages to a monthly value of 21.3 billion it was the largest month-on-month -month increase since the current data series began in 2002. So geez, this is something that you know could be an indicator of future price growth is the largest month-on-month -month increase since the data began. And they also had the largest decline on record since records began in May. So could this just be a dead cat bounce? Because you know it's easy to have, you know, if, if something falls 50% and then it rises 25%, people say, look, wow, wow, it's risen 25%. That's after it's dropped 50%. So it may not be a, a true reflection of what's really going on. It could just be a rebound, but it is something we have to watch because easy lending and loans, and if banks are giving out loans to customers, um, that means they have more money to go out there and bid up property prices, and this is what could lead to house price growth. Owner-occupier loans gained 13.6%, and investor home loans picked up 9.3%, a much larger increase than 3.5% gain in July. Buoyed by the federal government home builder scheme, first home buyer new loan commitments leaped 18.4% and the value of new mortgages to first home buyers rose 5.02 billion, more than 1.01 billion worth extended to investors. It was the first time first home buyer loans exceeded investors since May 2009. So there we go, remember all the stories of the first home buyers, you know, having to battle out with investors in like 2016, 2017. Um, the investors were just completely dominating the first home buyers. So it's good to see that first home buyers are now getting into the market, you know, if that's always been your dream to buy a property. But I just hope it doesn't end in tears with this 5% first home buyer deposit scheme. I hope people aren't over leveraging themselves and especially in Melbourne, I hope you know they're not doing it with a 5% deposit because we've already seen house prices decline over 5%. So I hope people don't get in negative equity and become a mortgage prisoner. It's quite remarkable that we're in the midst of the biggest economic downturn in a generation and yet new lending for homes is pushing higher at an accelerating pace, CBA economist Gareth Ard said. And it is right, we're in you know the biggest recession in 90 years, but it's this very strange recession because a lot of people that have been affected are those that are casual and part-time. And those people probably weren't gonna buy properties anyways because they wouldn't have got approved if they were casual, um, not getting enough work. And if they were part-time, you know, they wouldn't be able to buy a property worth five, 600,000. So maybe that's why we're seeing that this is turning into a two-tier economy. Some people are actually doing much, much better um, in this recession than before. Like for example, I said before, people have taken 40K out of their super, they've had their tax back, you know, they've gotten two $750 payments from the government. Um, some people on JobKeeper or on JobSeeker are making more money than they were making before. Um, and, and also too, people haven't been able to spend, so they've been able to save more money. And so this may be the opportunity, people that you know didn't have the discipline to save before, they've all of a sudden now, they're flooded with cash, the first home buyers, like the 25K home builder, first home buyer grants, 5% deposit scheme, all of a sudden they're now in a position to buy a property that they never were in before. And I guess this is why we're seeing the rebound in the data that first home buyers are flooding into the market because 
most first home buyers um, I know, they just weren't um, disciplined enough to say that deposit, but now that's obviously not an issue now. And people aren't going on holidays, so maybe that money they'll put on holidays is now all going to housing. So I think this is maybe the reason why we're seeing this right now. But the real test, like I keep saying, is going to be next year. The Reserve Bank has meanwhile observed that while property prices in the key metropolitan markets of Melbourne and Sydney have only fallen a little, they highlight larger falls in inner city areas as the appeal of central business district fade. So that's right, normally what happens with the market, they call it a ripple effect. The, pr the, the upper end of the market tends to move first and the inner city markets tend to move first. And then that flows out into the outer fringe suburbs slowly over time and then obviously into the regional markets. And that's right, if all of a sudden you can work from home, there's no reason to um, live in the inner city uh, where it's so expensive, maybe you'll move out into the suburbs or like me, I'm moving uh, out into regional. Again, another risk I'm seeing with this, if all of a sudden you know businesses can realize, hey, pe we, we don't need the people to work in the office or people can work from home, maybe they can offshore the work to India, Philippines, um, where, why would they pay you 30 bucks an hour to work from home when they can offshore it to them? So that's another risk I'm watching too. It may in the short term, it may seem good, but in the long term, it may turn into a bigger issue. While the number of households behind on loan payments elevated and are expected to rise further, the central bank warns the likely fallout on property prices from forced selling, higher unemployment, and plunging migration levels. And I agree, those are big, big risks right now because all these um, new developments that are coming onto the market, all these new uh, estate suburbs that are being built, it's going to add more supply, but we're having actually people still leaving Australia and we're not getting enough migration in. So short term, this could be a shock um, to property prices because it's all supply and demand. If the supply is there and there's not that demand there from immigration, that's gonna be a risk. But again, I'm also I'm sure once the borders open, the government's gonna flood us with immigration, they're gonna pump them through because that's how the Australian economy has grown over the past 20 years. And I'm very, very interested to see if the banks are actually gonna follow through and, and foreclose on customers and force them to sell. What we saw in the US in the, G, in the GFC is they did that at the start, but then the banks actually stopped foreclosing on customers because prices started to decline too quickly. And then all of a sudden, the bank wasn't going to get anything out of it. The bank was actually going to lose. So I wonder if the banks will do this here in, a, in Australia, if they'll learn from what they did in the US. If maybe they'll do a few forced sales at the start, but then if property prices start to decline too much, the banks actually may stop forcing customers to sell, and then they'll slowly offload those properties over time. Borrowers who have deferred loan repayments will at some point need to resume payments. While housing prices have declined only modestly to date, they could fall further given weak population growth and potential that some mortgage holders in financial difficulties sell their properties, the review said. So the RBA is saying at some point they are going to have to repay and that's exactly right. You know, some spookers just say, no, nah, they'll just be able to extend, extend, extend forever. Who knows? Do you think the banks will kick the can down the road again after March or do you think they will start telling customers to sell? You know, nothing surprises me now. I wouldn't be surprised if at the last minute, if the risks are mounting up, that the banks will extend it again. For the second time in a week, the Reserve Bank reminded customers it was in their best interest to engage with lenders and stop giving them the silent treatment, saying it was important borrowers engage with their bank. It has been estimated that as many as one in five borrowers on deferrals have ghosted banks attempting to establish contact. contact. And this is something that's very alarming. But you know what, I do feel for the people out there that are doing it tough. Um, they may be in a terrible financial position. They may be terrified to speak to the banks. They maybe don't know what to do. I've been in that situation before where I had a default, you know, from when I was very young and dumb, when I was 20, uh, with a personal loan and the banks are calling me. And, and you know, f for someone that's young and never deal with that, it's pretty scary and you don't know what to do, but they're right there. The best thing to do is it's not that scary. Just like a band just rip it off, just pick up the phone, speak to your bank. They do not want to default on you because then that's gonna affect them as well in this time. Um, so just give, give them a call. I'm sure you'll be able to work out something and I hope things do turn out better for you in the future. The way the banks deal with customers who cannot afford to repay their loans will also be critical with the Reserve Bank urging lenders to be transparent about the performance of their loan books. 
This is something that I think is alarming, is the banks are still classing these loans as performing loans or AAA rated loans that they could be selling as mortgage backed securities to investors, kind of like what happened in the subprime crisis uh, in 07. So I don't know what the banks are gonna do with all these loans that you know are deferring. I think they should be classed as bad loans because that's what they are, they're not paying, they're bad loans. Just call it as it is. But the, I'll tell you the reason why the banks don't wanna do that because if the banks have more bad loans on their books, that means they have to hold more reserves. Banks need to deal carefully with loans of borrowers who will not be able to resume payments in a way that balances avoiding further losses to the bank, the interests of the borrower and potential spillover effects from any sales of collateral. So the Reserve Bank of Australia has been giving very strong warnings to the private bank saying, hey, don't, don't mess this up. This is a big, big issue in the economy. You stuff this up, the housing market goes down and you know 58% of Australia's wealth is tied up in the housing market. So now the housing market goes down, the whole country goes down because it has a wealth effect. If people's property prices are going, they feel less going down, they feel less wealthy and they're likely to stop spending, especially if they go into negative equity. Where property prices go up, all of a sudden they can turn their house into a big credit card and they can refinance their house, do renovations on the property, they can buy, buy a car with it, they can go on holidays. And this is what's really helped the Australian economy is strong property price growth and immigration and digging holes and selling resources. So we're definitely not out of the woods yet. There still are some huge, huge risks in the property market right now. Like I keep saying, we have two forces. We have the low interest rates and the RBA is likely to drop interest rates again next month. We have lending restrictions easing, but not right now in March. A lot of people think that they're happening now, it's not happening now, it's in March, but maybe the banks might ease a little bit now. And we have all this government stimulus that's been thrown at the market. Some people have been in a better position than ever, but then we've got all these other risks of high unemployment, businesses trading while well insolvent, all these home loan deferrals. So it's these two forces, what's gonna win? You let me know what you think will win. To all my loyal viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. And if you haven't already, smash the like button for the whole YouTube algorithm. It really helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, subscribe. I'll keep you up to date on the latest property market data and news. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.